In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can change information in a database from Delphi side via Delphi code. And in this video, we're going to look particularly at how to add a new record to the database tables from Delphi side. So when you want to add a new record to a database, um, the key there are three key steps. The first step is to put it in the correct mode. So in this case, we're using an ADO table called TBLCD. So if that's your ADO table. The connection would have been done in such a way that that is connected to the CD table in our database. So we want to add a new CD to our um, to that table. So the key step, the first key step, is to put the database into insert mode. You don't need to put the pointer anywhere. You don't need to go to the last record or anything. It will automatically go to the last re uh, last place in the database and create almost like a blank spot for uh, your new values to go in. So that's what insert mode will do. Then you can put in the values into the necessary fields. You don't have to do all the fields. Only You have to put in the required fields and you have to put in a primary key value that is a suitable primary key, which we'll talk about later. But you must put in those values that you want to put into um, that new record. And then once it's done, then you must post the results. And what happens with that post results is like if something had to go wrong between the insert step and the post step, then because the post step wouldn't have happened, then it wouldn't have inserted that record. It's a way to make sure that it won't insert a record unless everything is done properly. So that's just a fail safe that databases have to make sure that the data goes in. So let's have a look at those three steps. We're going to look at inserting just one record into a, dat a database table. Here we have our program. We can see that there's the details of a CD table. There's our uh, CD database. So there's this TBL CD uh, table that is connected via a data module. It has all the data connectivity. There's a connection, there's a data table or ADO table, and there's a data source, and that data source links the table to this DB grid. You can look at our video about connecting a database on what that all entails. But we are going to be using this TBL CD component. That's what's connected to the CD component. And if you remember, because it's in this data module, we need to refer to this DM CD data module in our code. So that's the key thing. So to get to the TBL CD, we must use DM CD. So over here, we've got insert record. Now we've got a whole bunch of records. Now I'm going to enter the values. I'm just going to show you something right at the bottom there. You'll notice that all the CD IDs, which are which that's the primary key. And remember, a primary key must be unique and it must not be blank. So we've got to give it a each record must have a unique non-blank value. So you can see that the last record, which it sorts it looks like, so that's 250 is the last record. So I mustn't use any value that's 250 or less. So what I've done for us already is I've in the insert record button on the click on click event handler. I've just used some input boxes to get the values that we want to put into the, the, the table. Um, you could use an edit box for each of these values. You can use whatever you want. I'm just for this example, I'm just using input uh, boxes. So these boxes are going to pop up and we're going to enter in the values for the CD that we want to put into the table. So, so let's just remember, we're going to use dmcd.tblcd. So that's the data module dot. That's the table we're working with in that data module. And the first step, if you remember, was the insert step. And it's as simple as that. Now we can go into changing each of the fields that we want to change. And you would do that by referring it to the data module and the table that you're working with, ADO table. And then you, in square brackets, you refer to the field names exactly as they are in the database. So that's CD underscore RD. So therefore, we must say CD underscore RD. And that must be equal to the same value as our variable, which is CD RD. Just make sure that whatever type that is in the database, if it's an, a number field, make sure that you put in a number field into it. And that, that's an integer, so that should work. And so you're going to do something very similar to this for each and every one of those records. 
So for example, for the artist, the artist field is called artist. So let's go over here, type in artist, and that is a string field, and we're going to put in the string s artist, which gets from that input box. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and done all the other fields for you. So there you can see all the fields that we want to enter into this new record for each of the different uh, fields. So there you can see the field names. Um, hopefully I've spelled them all correctly. And they're going to be allocated the values from these input boxes. As I said, you could use an edit control. So that's the second step. So first step was put it into search mode. Second step was to allocate values to the fields that you want to enter into this new record and if you remember the last step was to post the results and you just simply say dot post okay and once that's done that should add the new record sometimes you want to have a little show message at the end to show that a record was added but let's see if this works hopefully we spelled everything correctly and it'll run the way we want it so let's run the program so the, when we click on that insert button, we should see a whole bunch of or a whole bunch of input boxes popping up. So yeah, it is. It oh, seems to be not responding at the moment. Let's see if it catches up. Okay, there we go. It's running now. So let's click on the insert record. Now we're going to enter in a CD ID. I've already put in a 251 because we know there's only 250 records, so we want that to be 251. I'm inserting Lincoln Park. The Meteora CD, I'm giving a genre of rock, and its replacement value is about 150, and we allocate an owner ID of one. So if we go all the way to the bottom now, if I come all the way there, there you can see that the record has been added successfully. So that's how you insert a record into a database. Now that's easy, that's very easy. The problem comes when you insert a record is to worry about this primary key now. And the deal with the primary key is you want to make sure that that primary key is unique. Now, in the example we just did, the user could enter in a value, and that's fine if they enter in a unique value. But what happens if they don't? Then your insert is going to crash. So you want to try and make a way that the user doesn't have to worry about the primary key because it will always be unique. And this is the ways that you can do it. The one way is to make sure that the primary key is an auto number. If it's an auto number, then the database will automatically allocate a new value for that primary key. You don't have to do that. So therefore, you don't have to input the CDRD if that was an auto number. Maybe it's not an auto number. Maybe it's just a normal number, like in this case. What you could do then is we could find the, the biggest value in that table by using some sorting technique. And whatever that value is, we just go to that value plus one. So we could try to find what the biggest value is in the table. And in this case, it would be 251 because we just added the 251st record. Find out what it is, and then we add one to it. Um, you could also generate code um, by locating to see if that primary key exists. And if it does exist, then you don't insert the record. And if it doesn't exist, then you can do it. So we're going to do examples like that now in our current situation. So with the example that we just did, the user entered in a primary key. So if we want to first check if they've entered a valid primary key, maybe we want them to enter in whatever code they want. What I would do here is I would first do some sort of locate. I would first say if dmcd.tblcd.locate okay now if you remember locate there's a locate video um, that is what you what field are we looking in we are looking in the cdrd field so we're we looking in the cd underscore rd field and then it's what value inside there we're looking for rc rd that's the the value that we're looking inside there and then you can just put square brackets, square brackets for your um, LO partial key in that. If you want to leave that out, we can do that here. So we are going to look, if they type in 251, which we now currently have one 251 in there. If you find a 251 inside the CDID, that means that it's not a unique situation. If that equals true, that means that that ID number that you have given to for the new record can't be used because it currently exists in the table. 
So if that happens, then I'm just going to say a show message, um, not a unique primary key. Okay, I don't know if primary key is with an A or an E, but let's leave it like that. So we simply can say it's not a unique primary key. If we can find that value in our table, we can't use it because there's already a record with that value. Else, if we cannot find that, then we know that it is unique and then we can do this whole process of inserting a new record. So we first check to see if that ID exists. If it does, we say, hey, we can't use that. And then they will be forced to click on the button and give a different primary key. Okay, so let's test it in this case. Okay, so I'm going to enter in the exact same information. We know that there is a 251 record, so we know that it's going to fail. So we're going to insert 251. I'm going to insert another 251, insert the same values, and it comes up saying not unique primary key. And there we go. We stopped it from entering a value that is not valid. So now when I insert it, now if I type 152, which we know is a valid record, we can say let's put Linkin Park, let's put in another hybrid theory album. And that's also rock. And let's say it's 120 replacement value. And it's also, let's say it's owned by owner number two. So if I add that, do you see now it accepts it because it is a unique primary key. So there we go, that works. So that's the scenario if you want to search for that primary key. Now, because it's a number, we can also calculate it. So I'm going to not even ask the user for the CD ID. I'm not going to ask it for it. I'm going to try to work out what is the best value for that. So we don't need to locate anything. What I am going to do is I'm going to DM CD is I'm going to use the sort feature. So watch what I do here. I'm going to use the sort feature and I'm going to sort it on CD, RD, but in descending order. You could also actually go ascending order. There's a little trick to this as well. You can use either one and I'll explain which one you're going to use, which, which way you could do it. So we sort it in this case in ascending order. And then I'm going to make sure that I go to the very last record. Because if it's in ascending order, it's from the smallest to the biggest. And if I go to the last record, I'll go to the biggest. Now, if you sort it in descending order, that's fine as well. But then it'll be the biggest one will be at the top. So instead of last, you will then go to the first record. Not tblcd.last, but tbl.cd.first. So our pointer should be at that particular point in the database. It'll be there at the last record. So then I will go and get that CDRD. So I can say our CDRD is equal to whatever the value is of the current CDRD. So we go fetch the last one's CDRD, get its value, and we just plus one onto it. And that will create automatically a unique one because we know that there's no value bigger than that, and we've just added one onto it. Let's see if this works with a scenario. So let's run it. So when we insert now, we don't get asked for the item. So we're going to put Lincoln Park and I'm going to say uh, best ofs. And then I will say this, it's rock. And this one's a little bit more valuable. So make it 180. And then that's owned by owner 12. And I click OK. And there we go. Without even asking us for the CDID, it automatically generated one because it went to the last record, found its value of 252 and plus one for the new record. So that way it's always a new record. So just to recap, when you insert it into a database, a brand new record, you put it into insert mode first. Then you give the fields, their values, whichever ones you want to, as long as they, you don't have to give all them, but you have to give the primary key value and you have to give the required fields and make sure they're of the same type. So if this is a string in the database or a text field in the database, you must give it a string. If it's a date field, you should give it a date type format. And then once you've done all of those fields, you then set it into post. 
as I said, the only tricky part is to work out the primary key and how you want your program to do that primary key handling. For more videos in our video series on how to work with the database via Delphi, go to our YouTube channel. You can subscribe, go watch the couple of videos, go look at the playlist, and that'll tell you all the different topics that we cover. We also cover a couple of exam papers that can help you for your grade 11 and 12 exams. Um, and if you've got a Facebook page and a Twitter account, you can always see whenever we post new videos. And so please remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.